In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to avoid a very common mistake with overlapping geometry in Revit. That means that you have basically counting geometry twice in the same spot, and then you would get basically uh, schedules uh, with too much material that then gets ordered to the building site, and then you're left with a lot of unused material that you have paid for. So any mistake that costs money is very bad, so we're going to learn how to avoid it. I'm going to be showing you what this uh, overlap of geometry is. And then on an actual example project, I'm going to be showing you the best approach to make sure that this doesn't happen anywhere in the model and that you don't miss this pretty much anywhere in your entire project. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. And uh, as I said, the mistake that we're going to be talking about is double counting the materials or the elements. So what's going on? Well, in some cases, you might have something that's called overlapping geometry inside of your project. So here I have a good example of overlapping geometry. And you might think, well, I'm not really clear if this is overlapping geometry or not. So what I like to do first is turn off the thin lines. And then you can see a little bit better here with those thick outlines that here we do seem to have an overlap between this uh, floor and this beam and the wall. And the same thing is going on down here, we can see the same overlap. And we do want to fix that. So why do we want to fix it? Well, of course, because we don't want to count the material of the beam here inside of this wall, and then also uh, the material of the wall uh, at, the, at that same place, and so on. So let me show you here by selecting this wall. And then here in the properties panel, if I scroll down to dimensions, you can see that the volume of this is 5.878. Now, when we subtract the beam and the floors, let's see what happens. So you do that by going here to the modify tab, and then going to join geometry. I'm just going to click on join geometry, you can check on multiple join just to make this a bit quicker, then select the wall first, and then we can join this floor here, just like that, we can join this floor, and then the beam as well. Now the beam and the floor have already been joined together. So I don't have to join that. And now I can just go back to modify. And now this should be connected. Yeah, as you can see now, when the thin lines are turned on, the thick outline goes all the way around indicating that this is joined, and we don't have that overlap of the materials. Okay, so now, having done all of this, if I select the wall, you can notice that here we seem to have lost a good chunk of this wall. So it was 5.878. And so we've lost, uh, I think, like, 0.5 of a cubic meter of concrete or whatever the volume of this wall is. So that's quite a lot of material that we don't have to order or that wouldn't be ordered as an extra that we don't really need to use inside of the project. Now, this is a great kind of small example, but let's see what does this look like on an actual project. So here, if I open up the 3D view, you can see I have an actual project and we have a lot of overlapping geometry here. So if I go down to the project browser, find my sections, let's open those up. So here, as you can see, because the thin lines have been uh, turned uh, off, you can see here we have this beam and this floor inside of that wall. If I open up the, the other section, here we have the beam above the window and this one, and it's all overlapping. But it might be really hard to just figure out where all of this overlapping geometry is. So in those cases, what you want to do, and what I prefer to do is first to make my model a little bit transparent, just for kind of figuring it out. So I'm just going to select all of this geometry. And then I don't need the grids. So let's go here to filter, uncheck the grids, and then go to apply. Okay, and now right click 
override graphics and view by element. And then here, let's crank up the transparency to 40. Yeah, looks okay. Click okay again. There we go. So it's a little bit transparent. And now we're going to be using another tool that's here on the collaborate tab. On the coordinate panel, we have the interference check. So in this case, I'm just going to run an interference check. It basically looks like this, like a window with a couple of panels, and we have different categories where we can run interference checks. So in this case, I just want to run it between walls, and then let's go with structural framing and floors. So I just want to see, do we have an overlap between walls, structural framing, and floors? So let's click OK and it's going to give us this report. And basically it's like this, like a table, and it just gives you all of the floors that are cutting into your walls, and then below here, all of the structural framing. And if you select one of these here, I can zoom in and then I can see, okay, so here we have this wall that has interference with this beam, uh, and then if I select this one, okay, so we have that issue, and so on. So what I can do is I can try to use some joint geometry, so I can perhaps select this wall and then let's try to yeah let's add this beam this beam here this beam here do we have another one so okay this floor obviously there we go then i can hit the escape key once let's go back to uh, join geometry then i can select this wall and then i can add let's see what do we have there so we have this beam we have the floor there we go so i can just click outside to deselect that wall, and then I can go to the next one. So for example, if I select this one, so sometimes uh, when it comes to this join geometry, if you're using multiple join, you might get issues. So it might be the best just to escape out of the tool and then continue. So I'm just going to select this uh, wall here now, and let's see, okay, so we can add these two and so on. So these are okay. So now let's hit the escape key a couple of times and so on. So now we can refresh this and as you can see some elements have now been missing. So we can just continue going through this and see, okay, so here we have uh, an issue with this wall or this wall. So if I have that, let's go back to join, multiple join and then select this wall and then let's add the beam and the floor now and this beam as well, nope. Not that one, it's giving us issues, so let's just go to undrawing. Hit the escape key a few times, refresh, and as you can see, there's now less of them, and I don't think this wall, yeah, so this wall no longer appears here in the report. So basically, you can just use this interference report to go through your model and then just use join geometry like this in the 3D view to join some elements together in order to avoid the interference counting them twice and getting issues later on down the line when uh, the materials have been ordered, delivered to your construction site, and now you have, well, too much stuff. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you would like to get access to this Revit model or any of my other Revit models, you can find that on my Patreon page. I'm going to link that up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video.